Hi, I'm Dr. Gerald Dees. Welcome to Health Center from Downstate Medical Center. <coughs> the other night I was at a program, uh, participating with a program on children or people who have uh, maybe have a medical condition that's genetically determined. So I was at this program and uh, this young man got up and he, uh, he didn't have sickle cell anemia or any of these other things that people were telling about their children and things like this. But uh, I found out his name was Keith Richards because he got up and he did a, a rap, or not a rap, a poem that really was just fantastic. And so after I saw that, I said, man, now here, uh, here this young man had to be born with a condition that didn't stop him in his tracks. That's the thing, didn't stop him in his tracks because he has got some voice and got some words that God put in for here for a purpose to share the light of, of, of day on so many other people. And uh, to the point where, you know, I don't receive, I, I receive awards. I was there to receive an award that day from children with diabetes. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, she gave me uh, uh, this wonderful award and, uh, and I gave it to Keith. I sent it to Keith because I said anybody that has beat a genetic situation that could de maybe shorten your life or anything like that, but this this wasn't going to shorten his life. Not at this point either, because I expect him to be sitting here at 80 years old talking about it. <laughs> so, but I was so impressed with his abilities that I gave him my award. And uh, so I want to welcome you, Keith. Thank you. Keith it's an honor. Yeah, it's a, well, I tell you, it was an honor to, honor to meet you that night, you know, because um, maybe just before we get into this, uh, you could just talk a little bit about uh, your condition, maybe medical condition, so people have an understanding of what Certainly. it was. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the name of my condition is called Von Hippel Lindau disease, okay. VHL for short. It's named after the two doctors that discovered it, Dr. Von Hippel and Dr. Lindau. Right. And basically the way that it works is um, it is a genetic condition that uh, manifests itself in different um, tumors that can pop up in many various uh, spots right. on the body and um, uh, spots and tumors that can happen. And uh, as a result, um, my family, I got it passed down from my maternal grandfather. He uh, died before I was born right. um, of a brain tumor. I see. And um, I had an uncle that passed away. Uh -huh. um, my aunt Laverne uh -huh. passed away. My mother, Kathleen, it did her in also. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, right. and um, I've had brain. I've had two major brain surgeries and one minor one. Although I have no idea how you could call any kind of brain surgery minor. Right. But that's what they say. Right. Surely. Surely. Yeah. And uh, and and you. So you followed it from the uh, the DNA. Right. Did it go any past did you? able to follow it any further than your immediate family that you were just talking about? Um, I'm actually a part of an alliance called the VHL Alliance, and um, it links people um, all over the country and all over the world that share this uh, genetic illness. Right. And um, as far as I know, myself, my family, and another black family that lives in Baltimore mm -hmm. are the only two black families that they know about in oh, the country. Right? Wow, that's With VHL. I could be wrong up until now, but uh, up until now, that's um, what I know. And what's the VHL stand for? The Von Hippel Lindau. Lindau, Lindau. Surely, okay. Right. Yeah. Extremely rare. Right, yes. Especially in black people. And, uh, well, now, the thing is that around, here you're sitting here. Yes. What about your schooling? What, uh, how, when you went to school, public school, did you, uh, how far did you go in school? Um, I, I went to elementary school, junior That's high true. school, graduated high school, Martin right. Van Buren High School. Right. Shout out to Martin Van Buren. Right. Uh, and then I uh, went on to graduate and get my Bachelor's of Arts from uh, the University of Delaware. Okay. And yeah. what was that in? Psychology. Yeah. Psychology, okay. Yes. And uh, the, first, the first real occurrence of VHL that happened in me happened in 1988, 1998 right. at the uh, ending of my sophomore year. I see. Um, it uh, was, um, it's all documented in a song that I right, wrote, but right. uh, I'll, I'll share that with you a right, little bit sure. later. Um, 
I, I remember quite vividly. Um, it was my birthday. My birthday is July 13th. So I was uh, involved in a summer program. Um, I was an RA, sla resident assistant slash tutor for some young, for some young people uh, still in high school I in see. a program called Upward Bound Math Science. Right. And um, it was my birthday and we were out on the lawn playing kickball. I see. You know, right. and you know, just a nice, uh, have a day to reminisce on kickball. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I went up to kick and as I was running, I was like off balance and really couldn't, you know, yeah, right. hold my balance the way that it was. And I was just like, that's odd, that's kind of weird. And um, didn't really pay it any mind at first. Then I started to have some headaches mm -hmm. and um, I started to uh, regurgitate a lot, I vomit see. a lot. Right. And, um, um, and as a result, it just progressed and progressed mm -hmm. to the point where I was just really feeling some type of way, miserable. And how old were you then? I was, I had just turned 19. Right, right, okay. And, um, you know, it had persisted and persisted after I, after the program was over. I went back home to New, came back home to New York and I told my mother and my father and my sister what was going on with me. And, um, and all this time had gone by and it never occurred to me that, um, I may have VHL. I Meanwhile, see. my mother had, a uh, been through numerous surgeries by then. Oh, I see. Yeah. And she knew she had it? Yes, uh -huh, absolutely. Right, Her yeah. and my auntie. I see. So, um, you know, and, it, and it, one day my mother just was just got really sad, overwhelmed, and started to cry because of what was going on with me. Yeah, You know, right. she didn't like seeing me sick or in sure. any kind of pain, like y your typical mother. Yeah, right. Um, and one day, my sister just walked up to me and said, mommy's crying because she thinks you have VHL. Mm -hmm. And you know, big light bulb just went off in my head. Oh, I see. And um, finally it was uh, the day of a barbecue that we had I see. at the house. And uh, you know, our barbecues were pretty well known in our family. <laughs> I see, right. But um, so I sat in the garage during the barbecue, just playing music that way I could just be to myself. Right, sure. And um, it must have been father's intuition because my father just just came to me and just put his hand on my shoulder and said, Keith, are you okay? And I just shook my head and he was like, come on, let's go. And he put my arm around him and just walked me to the house. Right. And I just spent the rest of the barbecue in my bed. But what happened was, um, as a result, everybody saw my father walk me to the house right, and yes. everybody's upset. Now, the one thing I didn't want to happen, right. happened. I, I didn't want everybody making a fuss over me and just, right, you right. know, messing up their good time. Yes. You know, so I must have got like 15, 20 visitors throughout the rest of the day right. coming up to my room. And then when the barbecue was over, my father was like, get your stuff. We're going to the emergency room. Right. That's it, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm in the I'm in the um, hospital for about two or three days, and they're doing tests or whatever. And at first they say that um, it's a viral infection of, right, of yeah. some sort, and they were about to release me and deal with me on an outpatient basis. Right. But my mother was like, I don't want him to leave this place without getting an MRI of his head because he's been having headaches and I have VHL. Oh, so um, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, I told my I, I told my mother when I came home from the hospital that she saved my life, you know. Yeah. But um, and they were like, "All right, fine, whatever. We'll take the NMR ride." Isn't that something? I mean, they yeah. didn't get any history mm -hmm. uh, uh, other than here's just another person with some kind of symptoms or right. something like that. You know. And they could m miss the whole boat, you know, just by being. Yeah. I'm having headaches and, they, and it yeah. never occurs to them to check in my head. Yeah, hey, that's right, yeah. you know, yes. Yeah. I say it in my song, I guess that's why they call it practicing medicine. <laughs> right, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and history is so important. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, they're relegating everything to the computer and everything and nobody sits and talks to patients. Yeah. You know, and, and, and mm -hmm. you can learn what disease, disease the patient is having. Because certainly if I had seen you at that particular time, uh, I, uh, being a single practicing physician, not a group, right. I, I know it's on me to find out what's going on with you Absolutely. so I can obviate things from happening, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. what took place? So after they found out, after I found out that, you know, they took the MRI and I'm just 
sitting in my bed just waiting to go home at this point because it's right. just like, you know, everybody's wasting my time. I'd rather just, you know, if I'm going to be sick, I'd rather be just sick at home watching That's TV right. or Surely, something, chilling. chilling. Um, then uh, the main doctor came to me and said, Keith, we found something mm -hmm. after we took the MRI. He showed me the uh, image. Right. He said, we found you have what is called a hemangioblastoma oh, yeah. on your cerebellum on the left side of your brain right and uh, your cerebellum is the area that affects balance coordination wakefulness and these are all symptoms that I had couldn't get enough sleep couldn't keep any food down right, yes. you know and my balance was off I couldn't stand with my feet together with my eyes closed and how old were you then I was 19, 19. I just turned 19 yeah and um, so I immediately thought of my uncle who, yes. died, who died when he was 19. Right, chilling. And my grandfather, and, and you know, the tears started flowing. I'm just yeah. like, man, I'm about to be out of here. So <laughs> yeah. many things that I wanted to do. Right, sure. I at least wanted to graduate college, you know. Were you in college at that time? Yes, yeah. I just finished my, my sophomore year. Yeah. And you what know, college was that? University of Delaware. Okay, right, yeah. Yes. Home of the Fighting Blue Hens. Right, <laughs> right. And, um, you know, I, I had just crossed in my fraternity. What fraternity? Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Well, all right. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> you know? That's, uh, a, that's yeah, a beautiful I'm, thing. I'm, I'm Cap this, this, this world is a small place, is <laughs> it not? <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> so uh, you're, you're at home now, right? Yeah, I'm really at home now. <laughs> right. All but, right. Um, <laughs> you know, because I, I wanted to get active in my fraternity. Uh, before, before you are um, talking a little further, with that handshake we just did, nobody recognized, but we do recognize it by a handshake, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. If I didn't give you the handshake, you, you say you're jiving. Yeah, you're right. chucking and jiving. Chucking and jiving, right. Go ahead. Well, anyhow, you know, I wanted to get active in my fraternity on my sure. college campus. Yeah. You know, so, you know, so many things were on the horizon. I just, you know, and I'm just like, oh, come on. Yeah, right. And I just, I just got so shook. I was so afraid. I'm thinking of the men in my mother's life first, her father, then her brother, and now her son. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, sure. You know, and um, I have to give a great deal of uh, gratitude, thank thanks and credit to my aunt Tina, my mother's older sister. Right. Because she was the first family member to come see me when I, after I got the news. I see. She came to my room in the hospital and she just, she just saw how sad I was. She's like, what happened? Mm -hmm. And I said, they just told me what happened. Um, I have a uh, tumor on my, on my brain. Right. You know, and um, so I was just sitting down and she just, she said, what are you thinking about? She, I said, I'm thinking about my uncle and my grandfather. That's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah, surely, of course. She said, now you listen to me. That was more than 30 years ago in right. Brooklyn, you know, with black people, with racist doctors, right. sending my brother home, sure. saying stop wasting our time, didn't right. know what they were doing, didn't know what they were dealing with. Sure. And now this is 1998 and, um, you know, they found it a lot earlier yes, than right. they did with my brother and you're gonna be okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. and I don't know if it was her authoritative tone, the fact yeah, sure. that she was a school principal or right. my mama's older sister, or all of that thing, yeah. all of those things. But I believed her. Yeah, sure. You know, I oh, really yeah, did, yeah. and I, I just like, you know what? I am gonna be okay. Oh, you better believe. Sure, you know? that belief system is something else. Yeah, oh, and yes. um, yeah. so you know, they transferred me from um that hospital to um another one. Uh -huh. Where they did uh, my surgery and I woke up, <laughs> you know, and uh, it, and uh, had, had the staples in my head and everything, and I was just like, "Thank God, I'm, yeah, I'm still here." That's right. Praise the Lord and pass the hot sauce. <laughs> pass the hot sauce is right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that's a wonderful story, though. Yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. How, how parents have to persist. Mm -hmm. That we look for something a little further than what the ordinary is. Yes. You know? Absolutely. And I know myself in the practice of medicine, mm -hmm. uh, I never gave in to uh, just the history, but it has to be more than that. You have to look at the whole person, you know? And in fact, to the point where many times I had to resort to prayer. Yes. You know? Uh, to understanding. Uh, many nights I woke up three, three o'clock in the morning 
and things would run through my head, and I'd, I'd have to get up and write it down immediately, so Absolutely. I wouldn't forget the next day mm -hmm. to question this patient about this thing or that thing that I might have missed. Yeah, that's yeah. how I am with rhymes and poems. I know. You know, sometimes a cool metaphor will pop in my head. Yeah, you have to get them. Two words that right? rhyme. Yeah, I'll roll over and grab my phone and, and uh, <laughs> type it in the notes section. Yeah, I yeah, I I just did that the other uh, other night. In fact, I'm writing a book right now. You know? Okay, and uh. I want to know what the chapters should be and things mm -hmm. like this and so and it, it's not a it's a medical text it's a life text uh, with medicine included in it mm -hmm. you know so uh, showing how we all have medical conditions we don't even know about uh, yeah. or pre could predict we know people that die suddenly of a heart attack and it doesn't have a, your particular condition but they just have a a bad use of fats Absolutely. in their arteries. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And yes. so, because I'm looking at you right now, and you, you just look good and healthy. Thank you. And you're feeling good. That's the main feeling thing. Feeling better. Better. Feeling yeah. better. That's you good. know, I'm not I'm not 100 percent, but I'm way better than I was a year ago and a year before that. Yeah, and that's tremendous. There's a, a teacher at NYU named Dolores Krieger. Mm -hmm. She had therapeutic touch. Okay. And uh, she showed how we're just nothing but, nothing but electrons. Mm -hmm. That's all we are. In fact, my first test in chemistry at Brooklyn College was what holds up a bridge? And everybody drew the cables and this right. thing. And he said, uh, he gave us an hour to do the test. <laughs> so he said, I just wanted one word, an atom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> an <Right>. atom, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. And that holds up a bridge, mm -hmm. you know? Go ahead now. What, now, as far as your art and so forth, um, maybe you could recite something that you think would be showing that you're right here with us right now and, and can instruct us. Maybe, what's the name of the poem? Uh, staples. 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 Okay. Because my head <laughs> had to have some staples right. that stay okay. shut. Right, go ahead. You know. All right, well, this is my song, Staples. This is a uh, acapella. Um, here it is. July 13th, 1998. Celebrating my birthday, but still I didn't feel so great. My equilibrium was off and I was mad tired. Head hurt and feeling out of it and uninspired. At first I didn't pay it any mind, because everybody gets a little headache from time to time. So I figured I'd shake it off and keep it moving. But as time went on, I noticed my situation wasn't improving. On my face I kept a frown, because it got to the point where I couldn't keep any food down. Sometimes I would lose the feeling in my hands. Couldn't keep it together for nothing, so I had to cancel my plans. On the surface I was cool, taking it in stride. But all the while, on the inside, I was petrified. My parents could no longer assume. That's when my dad said, get in the car. We're going to the emergency room. So now I'm praying God will keep me from harm. Laid up in a hospital bed with an IV in my arm. I can't begin to explain my aggravation. Surrounded by doctors, but no one can give me an explanation as to what was going on up in my body. I'm constantly hearing words like maybe, possibly, and probably. The doctors were ready to tell me goodbye. That's when my mama said, not until he gets an MRI. That's when the doctor saw it. A hemangioblastoma on my brain fixing to put me in a permanent coma. I just cried thinking I was in the last of my days. I had a grandfather renical who passed away from the same exact thing, so I never got to meet him. And now I'm thinking it won't be long before I greet him. Never doubt the word of a physician, but if I gotta choose, I'll always go with mother's intuition. So as soon as my parents knew the deal, they got on the wire, had the word spreading like wildfire. I'm talking about from Virginia to, De to Delaware, New York to St. Croix. People sending up prayers that got a smile on their baby boy. Basically, it wasn't my decision to make. I couldn't die. Simple as that. Make no mistake. I had my whole life ahead of me, and I'd be remiss if I wasn't around for mom, my dad, and my little sis. My procedure went according to plan. Some people don't make it through surgery, but here I stand, and I can't complain. Life's been good to me thus far, and I keep a fresh cut around my surgical scar. I went back to school, finished it, and got my degree, all on the strength of the fact that my people prayed for me. You were there to hold me down through all the pain and the strife. That makes twice that I owe you my life. Mom, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I'm, you. I'm glad you're a Kappa. Yes, me too. <laughs> me too. Yes, I, 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 I love the noobs. I do. What about breaking up? Breaking up? What you mean? Oh, I have songs about that too? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to just do it a little bit? Certainly, certainly. Um, 
This was this is a song called Shoulda Known Better based on um a crappy relationship that I went to that uh I got into for all the wrong reasons. Um um I'm in a heap thinking about the company I used to keep. Baby got me losing sleep cuz I'm hurt deep. Taken into using good love making as the foundation for what proved to be a jacked up situation. Whenever she would call my name, I would run to her. Cause all I wanted to do was be up under her. She had me captive from sun up to sundown. Felt my soul shake when I made her love come down. Lips juicy, fat booty, hips curvy. Got my world topsy turvy cause this chick is untrustworthy. Negative situations always take a good turn. And every day is an opportunity for you to learn. When you don't attack and just retreat, you admit defeat. But you can never see light without feeling some heat. I tell myself over and over that I won't sweat her. But deep inside I'm pissed cause I should have known better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's just one verse, That's you okay. know, but it's a whole song, you know. Listen, here you got yourself a whole connection. Yeah. You know, maybe you talk about, we have about one minute to talk about connections. Certainly, certainly. Uh, mm. and, and, of course, animated poems. Here, volume one. But volume one, and yes. so people will be able to pick this up also. Absolutely. You know. But Keith, I'll tell you, uh, time goes so fast. Yes. I had to have you on. Mm -hmm. We'll do another show again, of course. But Absolutely, I, I'll be back. I, yeah, but I and I, I want to um, do something for you here at the hospital too, uh, as such, because um, it's so important to know how people with dis ease can bring it all together and make it easy <laughs> on yes. yourself. Absolutely, you know. And so, basically, it's a, just a pleasure having you here today. Uh, I was so impressed that night when you got up and recited, you walked up and down that thing and letting those people know who you were, you know. Yes. But now, do you have any other, uh, in a minute, plans for future employment of such? Well, um, I want to turn my writing and my poetry and my artistry from my hustle into my livelihood. That's good. That's the plan. All right. So, um, as a matter of fact, I just had a show last night up in Harlem okay. at Shrine. And uh, always making more and more connections, making, uh, you know, connecting with different people and different artists. Because right. I also produce. I'm a writer, MC, poet, producer. Right. You know, and uh, and that just means I make I make majority of the beats that I rap to. Oh yes, no. and that that came out of necessity. Well, you you know what God gave you to is a good voice. <laughs> yes, and uh, <laughs> I thank God and I thank my father because right? my voice. You know, you hear me, you hear him. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Well. I remember uh, I I have a um song that I'm a. Uh, putting that I'm going to put out I, I write so far ahead of myself this is my second album but I'm, I'm already writing songs for my fifth oh wow yeah I have a song um now I'm letting the cat out the bag I wanted to surprise my dad but it's all right I have a song that I'm right that I wrote that I've written for him where I say um after puberty hit I got his vocal tone people thought it was him every time I answered the phone you know so yeah. that's just one thing right. but uh I remember like back when I was um in junior high school went from uh, the first year to the second year, that's when my voice really, you know, I went from this to this, <laughs> right. you know. So um, I, I would answer the phone all the time. Hello. Yeah, listen, Brother Steve, this is such and such. I'm like, hold on, hold on. Who is this? You want to talk to him? All right, hold on. I'll get him for you. <laughs> and they're like, who this, Keith? I'm like, yes. Boy, you sound just like your daddy. Oh, my goodness, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. say, I know. I, I'll, get, I'll get him for you. Hold on. You know, so. Um, well, Keith, I'll tell you. I didn't know that you were a capper. Yes, okay? sir. I didn't know that all what you have done, mm -hmm. but you impressed me in five minutes, ten minutes at that thing. Thank so you. I say, if anybody want to give a plaque to, <laughs> it's, Keith, it's Keith Richards. Absolutely. So I'm glad you got that hanging on your wall. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. You know and. Mm -hmm. And when you get your books and things together, we're going to come back here and, uh, and, and let the folks know where sure. you're going, you know? Sure. Okay, so, may, uh, I, may, I, may I do a shameless plug? Go ahead. Well, my name is Keith Richards. Okay. And as an artist, my name is Just Saying, as in I'm Just Saying. And the reason why I go by that name is because if you think about it, whenever you say I'm Just Saying, it's always followed by something that's true or something that somebody needs to hear. So that's what I try to give people, that bottom line truth. 
So therefore, I'm just saying. And um, I've been doing my thing. I've been writing my entire life and I've accomplished. I have two EPs, two short albums, two full length albums. And I have a book of my poetry, Animated Poems, Volume 1. And you can access all of these things at my website www.justsayingmusic.com J-U-S-T-M-S-A-Y-I-N-M-U-S-I-C.com Peace and love. Thank, Thank you, Keith. You. Thank you. Happy Dr. brother. Keith. I hope you folks have really been inspired. I certainly have been inspired just by listening to him just a, uh, a few seconds, a few minutes on the floor at the last uh, thing I went to. But uh, keep on keeping on, people, but make your doctor uh, give you uh, more... Uh, better uh, history sometime and uh, maybe they'll find out what you got absolutely <laughs> so, so i'll see you the next time this is dr d's and keith richards mm -hmm.